Hello friends! Welcome back. My name is Jamon. How are you today? So in today's video, we are testing out a brand new launch by the Inky List. That's going to be their new SPF 30 sunscreen with 100% mineral sunscreen filters. This just launched last week. I had to order mine from the UK directly. This isn't available in the US readily yet, even though Inky List is sold at Sephora. But even still, I spent about 13 US dollars on this, plus the extra three to four dollars for shipping. So it ended up coming up to about 18, 19 US dollars for 50 mil. This is the first sunscreen that Inky List has dropped and it's kind of a hot topic right now, mainly due to the fact that it is a 22% zinc oxide broad spectrum sunscreen that has a cosmetic tint they are claiming to work for most, but not all skin tones. They're the first company I've seen that makes claims specifically saying this may not be suitable for everyone, which I actually want to celebrate. I want to applaud a little bit more. They're not being bold in their claims. Before we get into the review, I'm going to ask that you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you know when I post my sunscreen related content. Give this video a thumbs up and down below, have you tried this? Let me know what you think. Inky List is one of those really hot brands right now. They're really similar to the ordinary in terms of having single ingredient products, whether it's serums, moisturizers, cleansers, which feature one specific ingredient to target one specific concern. They launched a sunscreen. Going with the claims off the box, it is formulated for all skin tones. It's supposed to have low irritation and be makeup friendly. They clearly advertise this is supposed to be the last step of the skincare routine. What is our SPF 30 daily sunscreen? A 100% mineral UV filter sunscreen that is reef safe, non-toxic to marine life. Zinc oxide forms a physical barrier on the skin, which helps protect skin from UVA and UVB damage. It tells you to use on the AM, on cleansed skin, apply liberally. Liberally is a very loose amount still. Apply after moisturizer in 15 minutes before sun exposure. It also advertises that it's meant to be used on parts besides the face that are exposed to UV light as well. So don't forget your neck, your ears, other things. Because it's not US, they actually have to designate UVA protection as well. So you see UVA back here that's clearly circled. Towards the end of the video, I'm going to really highlight some ingredients, some claims that the sunscreen makes as I talk about the sunscreen and how it wears. But going through some of the smaller claims real quick, 22% zinc oxide helps protect from UVA and UVB damage, so you do get broad spectrum protection from that. 1% pollu stop helps protect skin from pollutants and prevent premature skin aging. I'm going to go over what that is towards the end of the video as well, but that's kind of like their antioxidant blend, I think. And 2% shea butter complex helps moisturize and calm skin. So a lot going on in this. For what it is, I'm really interested to try this. I've seen some promising things about this. Inky List is one of those hot brands, so I'm really excited to see what they do formulation-wise for the sunscreen because I actually have really high hopes. I've used some Inky List and I've recommended some stuff on the channel, but there's a lot from the brand I still want to use and get familiar with, so more to come. So for testing this, I'm going to be using my 4B sunscreen rubric to test how the sunscreen wears with beard, beading, beats, and brown skin friendly. Beard, how does it wear in facial hair, eyebrows, hairline? Beading, how does it play with other skincare? Is it gonna beat up and pill or is the texture gonna be nice and smooth? Beat, how does it apply and wear underneath makeup? How does it affect makeup application and how does it affect the overall wear of makeup? And then brown skin friendly. Is it brown skin friendly and to what degree? I'm gonna be doing a multi-day test where I adjust the amount of skincare underneath and the amount of makeup on top so that we can see how different variable factors can affect the wear of the sunscreen itself and the performance of it. Next time you see me is gonna be at the end of day four where I'm gonna give you a recap of each of the previous days and then give you my final thoughts and the final consensus on the sunscreen. Will it be Ramon recommended? We'll find out. So here we are at the end of testing the Inky List Mineral Sunscreen and I have some opinions on it. That's an interesting experience. So let's review first of all what the last four days of wear tests were and then I'll get into the formulation, the product itself based on the claims that Inky List is making and then my final thoughts. Again, my metrics for testing the mineral sunscreens, I go off the four B's, beard, beading, beets, brown skin friendly. Every day that I test it, I'm using about a quarter to a half teaspoon on my face, my ears, and my neck. I'm rubbing it in. I am not spending a lot of time doing so just because in a real life normal setting, I don't have 10 to 15 minutes to waste rubbing in a sunscreen. I'm gonna rub it in the same way I feel is necessary, the same way I rub in all of my chemical filters, see how it sets down in five minutes before I go in and apply all the makeup and stuff I'm gonna wear afterwards. So going through each of the days that I tested it, I am again adjusting the skincare underneath and the makeup on top to see overall throughout an eight to 10 hour wear test, how it's gonna look and how it's going to act and react to my skin and the makeup. So day one was light skincare, light makeup. That was my first day applying it. I did, as as you can see on screen, half my face with the sunscreen to see how it would look as opposed to the other half without it. My first thought rubbing it in was as it came out of the bottle, I was like, oh, I'm getting Cerave teas. And if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. But as you can see in the footage, the minute I rub it into my face, it low key like disappears. And that's actually one of the claims they make is a form of a low concentration non-cosmetic tint. 
but with the half sunscreen on my face, as you can see, you make the judgment as to the level of white cast slash tone up that I experienced from it. I thought it was very, very minimal. Apply it to the rest of my face, let it sit down for five minutes. I went in with a very light beat. I think I just did Fenty Matchsticks just to give a light coloring to it to kind of dull down the white cast. Overall, what I thought that day was just that it wore really nicely on my skin. My skin was very matte at the end of the day. I didn't have a normal breakup of my makeup around here. Minimal creasing to none, honestly. The white cast, my boyfriend says, it dulls or alters a little bit of the coloring of the foundation, but nothing too severe. It's not that noticeable in my beard or hairline. Overall pleasant experience. Day two, heavy skincare, same light makeup on top of it, just to see how these sunscreens are gonna pair with a lot of skincare layered underneath it. This is the claim Inky List does make for this, which I'll get to it later. What I noticed was the application with light skincare versus heavy skincare was very, very different. The way the sunscreen set down was very, very different. I felt like I really had to work it in and it never actually set down completely entirely. So going with makeup on top of it, I was a little bit scared to buff and to use a brush mainly so I think I resorted more towards sponges with that. The makeup still wore really nicely just the application was a little scary for me but as you can notice in the footage for day two I feel like it really settled into a lot of expression lines. I feel like because the sunscreen was sitting over a lot of emollient creams I use a few different hydrators a few different gel moisturizers. I use my ordinary azelaic acid so you have a lot of richer textures underneath it. The sunscreen sat on top of that instead of really setting into my skin. So the makeup as a result sat on top of the sunscreen. So as an oily skin individual, I feel like I can't put a lot underneath this just because it does affect the application, the wear makeup application on top of the sunscreen. Day three was light skincare. Just a couple of hydrators underneath it. The sunscreen with a full beat. I was genuinely very shocked at how nicely the sunscreen set. Again, it was a repeat of day one. It set down really nicely over just a few hydrators. I use this kind of like as a moisturizer and I'll get into the ingredients that make it a really nice moisturizing texture in a second. But the foundation went on it beautifully, set down into a nice soft matte finish beautifully. I was able to buff bronzer, all that stuff on top of it without the foundation moving, with that feeling I was buffing away the sunscreen, which was different from day two. When I went in with bronzer on day two, I like legitimately just buffed away the sunscreen in this corner of my forehead. With day three, with such little stuff underneath the sunscreen, it was able to sit down much more nicer on the skin so I could go in and buff on top of it, no issues. Set it down beautifully. Makeup wore honestly very nicely throughout the day. I'm a little bit shiny, I did blot, but if you look, there's no breakup. There's nothing moving the foundation here. I had a mask on today too for a good six hours. I'm a little bit creasy here. I did a full coverage beat. That happens a lot when I do a lot more foundation on my forehead, but my under eyes look great. Over here is my problem area. Looks great. Over here, amazing. No texture, very flawless. This wears really nicely underneath a full coverage beat. I find that the finish overall, if I were to stay on top of blotting and do really good setting measures, very nice soft velvet matte finish and then day four sunscreen only no makeup to see what it looks like on bare skin plus a reapplication of the sunscreen itself this is a testament again to how the sunscreen looks by itself on bare skin i feel like i do have a little bit of a very slight tone up on me in my facial hair this is one of the best wearing sunscreens in facial hair and in hairlines i can diminish the look of it substantially and with the reapplication it wasn't a horrible texture and it wasn't a horrible experience I do feel like putting the sunscreen on top of itself kind of reactivated the formula underneath it a little bit. It was a little bit thicker. It set down still very nicely, no texture, no pilling, no odd appearance, but it still, I think, enhanced a little bit more of the cast as a result of that. So that was the experience of the four days of testing it. Let's get into some of the claims that Inky List makes. This is a combination of their website plus some Instagram posts about the sunscreen. It's an SPF 30 22% zinc oxide formulation that has a non-cosmetic tint to it. Looking at the formulation for it, the ingredient responsible for the tint is caramel. And kind of to emphasize what that's gonna look like, I have some sunscreen here on the back of my arm, rub it into my hands. As you can see, it rubs nicely, leaves no cast. I'd probably do double the amount of sunscreen I did on the same surface area for my face, but then kind of wiping it off my hands. There's a tint, but it's really slight. With CeraVe, which is the other formula that I'm gonna base this off of just because of texture and tint comparison wise, that was straight up pretty much like a very emollient, very tinted BB cream. This, I have a lot less subtle of that tint. So that's actually very true to claim for what Inkelis is saying. It's reef safe, vegan, cruelty free, no fragrance, which is just due to the ingredients that it has. Zinc oxide is naturally derived. It is a vegan ingredient. It is reef safe. The no fragrance thing, the sunscreen smells. It doesn't smell like a sunscreen, but it has a smell to it. There's no fragrance added to it. And I think people always get very in their head about fragrance. Even if you don't have a scent in a product, there's still properties in the sunscreen formulation wise to mask a scent or a fragrance for other ingredients. This has a smell, so it's nothing even masking it. It 
does linger. I find throughout the day, especially with a mask on, I smell the sunscreen a little bit. It's not the worst smell in the world. It has the 1% Polu Stop, which helps to protect skin from pollutants and prevent premature skin aging. That Polu Stop is a combination of three ingredients. It's biosaccharide gum four, water, and one, two hexanediol. And basically it's the biosaccharide gum four that does a lot of that pull. I'll put some information on the screen, but basically I looked into it and it's a derivative of sorbitol, which is a natural sugar alcohol. And it's produced through a patented biotech process that forms a non-inclusive film to protect skin from pollution and UV rays. I'll put some more information on the screen about this ingredient. But that's what's doing most of the work in that polo stop ingredient situation. In terms of the ingredients, so they say that it's suitable for all skin types. It's meant to sit down to a soft matte velvety finish, which I can attest to. It actually looks really, really nice on the skin. The formulation of this is really nice. It's simple. It has a really nice combination of humectants in the form of glycerin and panthenol. You also got aloe in there, which has humectant and anti-inflammatory properties. That's also coupled with bisabolo. I don't know how to pronounce that word. Also an anti-inflammatory soothing ingredient. You also have squalene and shea butter that help aid in the moisturizing process, as well as a pretty nice list of emollient ingredients, caprylic or capric triglyceride, coconut alkanes, dimethicone, stearic acid, hydrogenated lecithin, and sunflower seed oil. So the feeling of it, it's nice, it's creamy, it's lush, it's not heavy, it sits down in the skin really nicely. The finish of it looks really great on skin. And even through six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 hour wear test, I found my skin never got too heavy or greasy. It kind of kept a nice finish on my skin. Depending on how I did my makeup, it would keep a nice satin blurred finish. Overall, it wears great under makeup, any condition. A big factor for me as an oily skin individual is that I have to have light hydrators only underneath it. If I do too much, it kind of sits on top of my skin, care doesn't set into my skin. The finish of it, the coloring of it works nicely for my skin. My boyfriend noted that on me, it's altered my skin color a little bit, especially when I wear it by itself. I didn't notice until I saw it on him where I was like, you look a little pale, like a little a little dull. What's really interesting is that Inculus is the first brand I've seen that's like, hey, our stuff's tinted. That being said, we're also not going to claim it's gonna work for all skin types. This will more than likely still have an ashy look on deeper skin tones. It might not even work for fairer skin. And that's a first for a brand. I'm gonna applaud them for saying that. Also on their Instagram, they claim that this is not tested to be water resistant sunscreen. That being said, in testing a few different cleansers, like I'm playing around with the Fenty cleanser right now, I noticed if I just went in with a simple cleanser to take this off, it did not break down easily. I did have to go in with an oil balm or an oil cleanser and really work it in to break down the sunscreen because it took a little bit of work to get it off and break it down. My boyfriend also had an experience where he was like, I feel like I still feel residue of it on my skin, especially on his neck. So something to consider with this, it's not water resistant, it makes no claims of that. And I feel like I really had to work to get it off when I was playing around and testing other cleansers and I feel like you really do need a balm cleanser to get this off. It's not easy to wash off. But overall, my experience with this was very, very pleasant. My final thoughts, is this worth it? I'm gonna actually say yes. Overall, just how it wore on my skin, how it's good for all skin types, the formulation for this, how it's nicely moisturizing, emollient, sits nicely on the skin, but it's not too heavy for oily skin types, where it's great under makeup, has a nice soft matte velvet blurred finish to it. I think it would be a very universally tolerated, acceptable look for most skin types. Inculus themselves claims it's not gonna work for all skin types in terms of the tint. We're gonna celebrate that. But that being said, the formulation of this is very, very nice. And when I ordered this, I had to order it directly from Cult Beauty in the UK. So it was about 12 pounds plus an extra five or six pounds to get it shipped to the US. For 50 mil, actually decently affordable. That being said, over the four days of using this, I feel like I've used about a third of this formula already for application and reapplication considered. So I don't know if you're gonna get a lot of use out of this. I'm interested to see what the price point's gonna be once it's actually available in the US. But overall, I had a really great experience with this. I might actually potentially continue to use this just because Chicago heats, this actually wore really nicely in underneath a lot of my makeup looks. I normally only do a couple hydrators underneath sunscreen anyway, so it's actually very fit for my daily needs. Tint wise, it wasn't severe enough on my skin color that I actually could use it by itself and not look a fool, but it's not gonna work for all skin colors. Realize that now. A friend of mine on Instagram, Jaimini, AKA HRH Skin, did a review of this. She has a similar skin type and she said that for her, this was kind of drying. She found that when she used a lot more rich humectant and moisturizing ingredients underneath it, it worked better for her skin. She's my skin color, but it was interesting to see her perspective that she felt she needed to use moisturizers with it when I wouldn't do that. And then my friend Karen, AKA Skin by Care, was actually featured in the Inculus campaign for a few other Inculus products. So she actually got first access to use this. She used a lab sample, but said that as soon as she got the full bottle, she would try it out. The lab sample left a cast on her skin, but she was interested to see what the actual final product would look like on her since it was actually a different texture from the lab sample she got. So if you want references, go check those out. But for me, this is the one recommended for sure. I think Inculus actually hit it out of the ballpark with this. This is a great formulation. I would love to see more out of the bottle. 
in terms of actual product that comes in this or a better price point. But again, if you can get this in store and only pay $12, $13 for this, actually a really good price point. So I had a good experience with this. It is Ramon recommended. Let me know down below. Would you try this? Have you tried this? Tell me what your thoughts were or what your experience was. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you know when I post more skincare and sunscreen related content. And give this video a thumbs up if you thought this was a good review. Thanks for watching guys.